guys, my name is Toby. Welcome to my channel, That Houseplant Guy. Uh, if you've already been here, it's nice to have you back. If you're new, happy to have you here. Um, in today's video, I actually want to talk about Hoyas. Uh, Hoya is for me a genus that I don't really have that much experience with yet. I only got my first Hoya basically four or five months ago. Uh, before that, it actually it was a genus I never really I was a bit afraid of getting into it because I heard that they're a bit finicky that um, often uh, you will only see after a while if you treat them right or not. So they, they will take their time to show you if you do something wrong or not. Um, but nevertheless, a couple of months ago, I decided, hey, why not try getting into Hoya? So I got one variety first, then a couple of weeks later, I got a second variety. Until now, they both are doing quite well. And I thought I'm simply um, going to do this little video to show you those two varieties that I have and how they're currently doing. At the meantime, also, of course, then talking about how I take care of them, so just to give you a little bit of tips that I now in this couple of months uh, picked up that, that I would say have, have helped them grow in a healthy way. So let's get right into this video, uh, starting with the first Hoya. Let me see if I can get this one here without it going completely crazy. So this is my Hoya Carnosa Splash, I think it's called. Uh, basically, it's the one with these this sort of silver splashes on its leaves. It has rather these elongated leaves, which I really tend to love, these elongated leaves. Uh, as you can see here, a lot of new growth. So basically, if you don't have Hoyas yet in your house, this is how Hoyas are growing. They first shoot out basically these long stems. Um, they actually are vining plants, I would say. So they really did try to grasp onto something. As you can see here, I actually have this on a windowsill. So this one is basically growing against the window and uh, the stems just started to grow on each other, basically, and to twirl around on each other, which I actually really find sort of cool to look at. That's why I really didn't do anything against that. So I kept it like this and see how they, how, how they will fare, basically, like this. Um, so as you can see, first the stems get very long and then only after a while you will see little leaves that will start to appear here. What I really like about this variety, let me see if I can find one, I think back here basically, is that the leaves at first come in in almost like a burgundy red, so they're really dark, it almost looks a bit sunburned, and only after a while they will turn into their normal green, as in this, in this variety is the case. Um, as you probably also know, uh, Hoyas, the, the, you will get blooms of them if you treat them rightly, uh, I think for me it's not yet there. I think it's too early yet to, to, to expect blooms from this one. As I said, I bought this one, I think, two months ago, I would say. Um, definitely this growth here is all new, so the stem definitely is new. A lot of new leaves also. Um, definitely something I'm looking forward to is them, the blooms. I think they also say, I think they smell like cinnamon, uh, often those blooms. So I'm really looking forward to see if, if this one will give me a bloom sooner or later. So um, looking at care, as I said, I have this in a windowsill, in a west-facing window, so it actually gets direct sunlight also. Of course, maybe a bit shaded in this window, um, but normally, yes, a good amount of direct sunlight. It seems to like it quite well there. Um, probably some of the leaves maybe tend to get a bit of sunburn. Actually, I, I do not mind this on this Hoya because I think it actually looks quite well. As you can see on these new leaves, like this, this first amount of sunburn, actually makes it stand out a bit more, I would say, so definitely not something that I mind on mine. Um, Watering-wise, I do tend to have it rather on the dry side. Um, that's something still I'm not quite sure with this Hoyas, actually. Uh, this one I tend to water a bit more, actually, so I definitely keep it dry, keep letting it dry out during waterings, but um, then I tend to water it quite, quite thoroughly again. It seems to be doing quite well, so this one I'm not struggling that much with when it comes to watering. The other one that I'm going to show you later, I did struggle a bit more with it. Um, maybe also because I repotted this into Coco Choir and this one dries out a bit faster in general. That could be, be the case, so definitely that's probably also the reason that it doesn't sit in water too, too long. Uh, Hoyas tend to have very, very thin, very soft um, roots. So definitely the root system can be, can be very fragile. So keep in mind that the root system, you shouldn't destroy too much. Also by water, wrongly watering, it will affect this one faster than other plants with thicker roots. Definitely. 
Uh, so this would be the first variety, um, probably well, actually one of my favorite plants, I would say, right now, uh, simply because it gives me so many new leaves. Um, I mean, you can see the leaves are basically stacked because there's so many in there. Um, and the new leaves that are coming, they are coming like in like really tiny and basically end up growing into these huge leaves. So really a plant I like to, to look at and a plant that until now actually is doing quite well in my house. So this was the first variety. So this is the second variety of Hoya that I have. Uh, and this one is called Hoya ovovata. It's also a Hoya carnosa, so it's part of the subgenus of carnosa. And the variety is ovovata. These are these more uh, round leaves. Uh, but these ones don't have any variegation, so there's just a green form, uh, which I really like. I, when I saw this one, I thought I actually have to get it because I really loved how these leaves look. This, this rather round, belly, bellied leaves. I really enjoyed. And actually, what I started to do with this one is to to build this sort of uh, frame for it where it can grow around so basically i just used a, a copper wire that i had lying around uh, stuck it into the soil on the bottom made this circle out of it and just sort of moved the, the already existing stems uh, around the around this, this almost trellis that i built for it um, it really seems to enjoy it there because uh, it got a lot of new stems uh, that have grown since then that I of course also try to, to move around this circle but it mostly actually does it by itself so I really don't have to do that much with it. Uh, as I mentioned before with this one I did struggle a while with it because it, uh, it started to lose some of the leaves especially in the bottom here. These simply uh, they yellowed and then they, became, they, 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 they fall, uh, fell off. Um, I think it was actually because I left this in its nursery pot still and I think the soil is not the, the best actually for for this uh, version of Hoya because I feel like it holds the moisture quite quite for a long time. I would say I also have this on a west facing windowsill so basically the conditions are the same than with the other. Um, maybe a bit less sun because uh, on this windowsill it goes out to my balcony which is uh, a roof on top also. So maybe a bit less sun. Uh, also, I don't have this one in terracotta, so this is also a reason, of course, that it won't draw, dry out as fast. Um, so definitely this is something where I have to, to be a bit more aware of how I water it. Because I definitely saw with this one in the past, if I overwater it, it will start to lose leaves. So that's something I definitely uh, keep in mind now when it comes to this one. Other than that, actually, it's doing quite well. Has, as I said, like this summer there has been a lot of new growth. Basically, when I got this, the, the ring was almost almost bare, still in the top, and all this growth here has happened in the last four months, I would say. Um, again, actually, when it comes to that one, definitely easier to take care of than I would have expected first, from what I heard from Hoya. So definitely also a variety. I do recommend, especially if you don't have that much knowledge yet about Hoya, something um, to definitely get into the genus, something to, to start. So definitely this one, this Hoya Carnosa Obovata is definitely one Hoya that's, that's definitely fit if you just start getting into the Hoya family. So take a look into this one. So actually this would be already both of the Hoya varieties I currently have. I don't think they will be the last ones because I really, really enjoy Hoyas actually. Um, they, also what I really like about them, the varieties, they look very different from each other. They are really nice variegated forms that that I also really already looked at that I might probably will get uh, sooner or later next, I would say. Um, so definitely if you are looking for a new plant genus to explore, I can definitely recommend Hoya to you. Um, if you have any questions, of course, just leave them in the comments. I will try to answer them. Uh, I would also love to know which Hoya varieties you have, how you take care of them and which is your favorite. So also leave that info just in the comments. Um, if you like this video, please leave a like and if you like this channel, please subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm. Bye guys!